cold weather conditions. Um, I've had a lot of questions about the vest that we're using this year. It's a Versa vest, it's made by Momarsh. Just what some of the things that we are concerned with and take into consideration and maybe make adjustments to as far as our hunt um, in colder conditions. I've seen issues with feet more than anything. When dogs lose heat through their pads, so uh, through their feet. The thing about the water is we had to get them out of the water, had to get them dry. These feet go down and now we've got a real, actually a real solid stand. And now we get it so that they're out of the water and those legs will extend. So their coats are made to, to go in and out of the water and not necessarily stay wet. The vest does a good job of holding body heat in. Um, and when you get into some extreme cold conditions, especially when you're wet and dry, wet and dry, wet. All right, welcome back guys. Um, gonna do a podcast episode. This one, if you're watching it on YouTube, it'll make more sense um, potentially because we're gonna show some stuff during it. If you're listening to this podcast, I would recommend um, maybe checking it out on YouTube. We are, it's gonna be a little bit different. Um, this podcast, we're gonna talk about what was, a, I've gotten a bunch of questions and the questions have been related to some of the hunts that we've taken Bella on recently. We posted them as Bella Be Good episodes cold weather conditions. Um, I've had a lot of questions about the vest that we're using this year. It's a Versa vest, it's made by Momarsh. Um, we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But I also wanna talk about in this podcast just what some of the things that we are concerned with and take into consideration and maybe make adjustments to as far as our hunt um, in colder conditions, particularly on water. I don't think it's a, nearly the issue if you're field hunting. Um, I certainly don't think it's an issue upland. Uh, very rarely have I ever seen issues with cold temperatures for upland dogs. Um, they're so active, they're so they're working. The biggest thing I think you can get I, I get concerned with there is uh, their paws, protecting their paws. I do see um, if they start getting some snow in there, they start licking it. It starts to turn into ice balls. I've seen issues with feet more than anything um, as far as temperature wise when it gets to the cold. The issue comes, I think, when you're getting the dogs wet. Um, especially when they're in and out of the water. Um, so we're gonna talk about a few things that we recently had to deal with. Um, we hunted with Bella and Ellie um, on a frozen flooded timber, um, about a half inch of ice, uh, created some real struggles for us. Dogs did really well in it. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. How we handled it, I wanna show you before, right, right when we get going. One of the things we used was this, uh, it's called an Invisalab. And so this is what it packs in as, you can pack that in, but I'm gonna show you because, and it's literally full of duckweed and blood and all sorts of stuff. Because what we ended up doing was we filled our ducks, we filled it up with ducks and dragged it, because it floated, we dragged it across the flooded timber to get it out. So you can see that, I just literally brought it in, so I will be cleaning our basement here. Um, but I wanna show you how easy this sets up. So when we get into the, it all folds down. When we get into the swamp, so there's this adjustable pole. You flip the adjust the two sides up, the adjustable pole, and then you extend it, and it locks in. And then as you lock it in and stretch it out, there's a flip, a lever there, and you just flip that lever. Now that locks that pole out. So that's extending it that way. Now it's basically a kennel, kennel, kennel. So now I can use it, so I just, for those aren't watching, I just told Bella, kennel up, kennel up. And she treats it like a dog hide. Um, something you can use in the field if you want. Um, we have dog hides that are similar to this that we use more for training than anything. They're just basically like a little portable kennel. Um, but one of the things too was they got used to peeking their head out one side and she got real good at starting to watch. Um, as ducks were setting into the decoys, I had actually one dog sticking out one end and one dog sticking out the other and they, they, we left the flaps down and they just kind of hung their heads out and it concealed them real well. We have also done it this way where we flip it both, flip it open completely. But Bella, come here. Now I'm gonna let her out. So the thing about the water is we had to get them out of the water, had to get them dry. And so when we bring these and flip these legs open, boy, I'm really gonna have to clean her up. These lock into place these feet go down, and now we've got a real, actually a real solid stand. Get up, get Bella, get up, 
Bella, Bella, get up. Come on, get up, get up. No, come here. Bella, come on. Load up, get up, get up, get up, get up. And now we get it so that they're out of the water and those legs will extend. So they extend probably another foot. So we use this both, every, every hunt we've done in that flooded timber, we've used this. And it's really been the only reason, the only way we can do it. So I'm just gonna leave her in there um, for now. But we're gonna talk about, so if you, again, if you're listening to the podcast, you might wanna watch this one. This one's gonna be a YouTube one. But, so the questions that I've had a lot of that came in since we've posted these is, what do you think about vests in general? neoprene vests for the dogs um, and I've had a few that are in particular asking about this one um, and we're going to talk about both. I do think, so I've, I've used neoprene vests with dogs for a long time. Um, the issues that I ran into with some of them are fit. I've seen it where if they don't fit well they rub. Um, if they rub in spots it's just like, you know, it'd be just like wearing a, a pair of shoes that don't fit you and going for a hike. That could get real uncomfortable real quick. Um, so I've trimmed them before. I have had seen some that are very, very thin neoprene, just a neoprene uh, layer, either Velcroed or zipped up. Um, is it better than nothing? I think so. Now again, the conditions are real important. So you gotta remember, this is not designed to keep your dog dry. Um, the water, they're gonna get wet. A lot of the, the waterfall gun dog type dogs, their coats are made. To, to go in and out of the water and not necessarily stay wet. So our dogs in particular, um, at the end of the day, we took the neoprene vest off and it's almost dry underneath. Now she was almost dry outside of it as well. And it's because they have a very oily coat. They have an under layer. Um, they have an outside layer and an under layer. That under layer is almost like an insulation for them. Um, that is what keeps them dry and keeps the moisture from wicking away the heat. What I think the vest does is the vest does a good job of holding body heat in. Um, and when you get into some extreme cold conditions, especially when you're wet and dry, wet and dry, wet and dry, getting in and out of the water, I do think that they're really important to keep the core body temperature of the dog. I think one of the things that I screwed up on, didn't really realize it until the second, until the end of the second day was, we hunted on Saturday and it was ice. And it, where we hunted and set the stand up, that stand was completely out of the water. It was out of the water by a couple inches. And so the dogs were dry, high and dry when they were out. The next day where we hunted, the water was a little deeper. And I didn't realize it until the very end that the dogs were out of the water at the doors, at the openings where I could see them. But there is some sag in that mesh and they were actually in the water a little bit. And so I think they had some issues with that after a period of time because, you know, dogs lose heat through their pads, so uh, through their feet. So when they're hot in the summer, they're panting and their feet are releasing heat. There's no, no hair there and it has, allows them to release heat out. It also is cold. So when those, because they were in the water, um, the example I have is for Bella, I took her out to take some pictures and I set her on a log um, that was up out of the water. And she stood there and she braced herself and I thought, well, it's just a balance thing. And what I realized was is she's trying to balance and then she just kind of like fell over, just like a tree falling over. She just kind of fell and I went, whoa, it kind of scared me a little bit. What I think was happening was, I think her legs got so cold, I think her muscles got so cold, I think she started to almost cramp up because of the cold. And so by when we would send her for a retrieve, when we would get her moving, when we would get that blood going, I actually think it was the best thing for her. I didn't realize that her poor little feet were in the water. So um, now the nice part about uh, Sunday, so that Saturday was ice. Sunday we had rain, Saturday into Sunday we had rain, lots of rain. Um, we lost all the ice, it was 50 degrees. So the day before it was 20. So the, because they were in the water, I do think that was hard on them. 
because it was water, I think it was a lot easier than the day before when it was 30 degrees cooler. So 50 degrees, you know, isn't the coldest. It's still pretty cold and that water was pretty cold, uh, well below 50 degrees. But I think one thing I'm, I'm was impressed with, I'm happy with is, uh, the, the ability for the dogs to tolerate some extreme temperatures, uh, some tough stuff. We posted a video of the dogs breaking ice to make retrieves. Um, we had rain and wind and lots of elements that created a lot of difficulty on the hunt for them. They did excellent. Um, it was a great follow-up. If you follow our Bella Be Good series, you'll watch a hunt that we just posted um, from three weeks ago in the exact same spot, and it went horribly bad. Uh, it just went really poorly. We just we did a podcast on it. it. Ben, we got a podcast episode, right? So we did a podcast episode explaining what happened. Well, since that podcast episode, this is when we went back and we hunted. Again, went right back in there. Um, prepared a little bit better, brought a second dog, um, did a lot, did some things differently. I went into it with a completely different attitude, which made a huge difference. And we found a ton of success and, and a lot to build off of. But with the ice, so Saturday's ice, I think the advantage of having the dog wear the vest was literally just breaking ice. Um, it's sharp. And so I think you have to be concerned when you've got ice, it's like glass and it can slice waders, it can slice your hands, it can slice the dogs up pretty good. I do think having the, the, the vest on is an added layer of protection there. Um, it's also obviously an insulating thing. I'm going to talk about the vest in particular because I had a lot of people ask questions about it. Now this one is, this, this is made by Momarsh. I bought two of these this year. Um, I've got four dogs. I wasn't going to get four right off the bat. I've had neoprene vests in the past and haven't been completely happy with them. So I, I read about this one. I tried it. It's very different. Um, we did, did we do a podcast or did we do a Bella Be, it was a Bella Be Good episode. We did a Bella Be Good episode when we first put this on her. She had a really hard time with it. Um, not because it's this vest, but just because it's a vest in general. It is difficult for dogs to get used to. I think they have to wear them a while. I think once they get used to it, it's no problem. Um, but you do ha you don't want to take them out hunting for the first time they've ever put the vest on. Uh, it's just, it can be too much. Um, it was one of the issues that we had the first time we took Bella hunting and she struggled. We took the vest off. That was one thing we did. It ended up not being enough, but um, the thing about this vest in particular is it's five, pe I think it's five pieces. It's, isn't it five pieces? It was five total pieces. There's, it's completely adjustable. And so what, end, what you end up doing is you basically custom fit it to your dog and it's got a ton of adjustment and what I, I what I think you know I, I said I only got two of them because I've got four dogs I don't hunt them all together but what I like to do is I like to have stuff at our cabin up north and I like to have stuff here that's in my truck and so what I'll end up probably doing is getting a couple more I, I like them enough to get a couple more I'm gonna leave a couple at the cabin I'm gonna have a couple in the truck because I'm not gonna usually be hunting more than two at a time anyway so I'd like to have two up there and two down here but what I will do with it, what, what I like about it is, so it zips together and Velcros, but the, the adjustability on it, so my dogs are about the same size. So I had Ellie wear this. We fitted this for Bella. And you can see that's a, a, a lot of adjustment. It actually goes up to about here. So you can get, you can get adjustment about that much on both sides. It adjusts on the corners. This is the part that would rub on the dog this adjusts. This actually you can have where you can slide this through and you can hide it or you can have it open. So I like this because you saw me load her up into the blind there. Um, this is a nice handle. Grab a hold of them. In the video I grab a hold of Ellie and I pick her up and I help her over a big log when she's breaking ice. So it's it's real well built. Um, I actually think that the level of thickness on this one, the, the quality as far as the neoprene, is a lot better than the ones I've had in the past. I don't know if it's because, I think it's because there's multiple layers, because this whole design is to be like Velcroed over the top of each other. So by the time you get right here, there's about this much vel there's about this much insulation and they're both layers both layers are this one has three layers because it's got a layer a layer and a layer all three layers are neoprene so 
if you know anything about staying warm, um, I've, I've learned over the years, the more layers I put on, even th the more thin layers I put on, the warmer I stay rather than one big heavy layer. So what I like about this is I've found that some of the vests that I've had in the past are really thin and really kind of cheap, um, cheap neoprene. They're basically the, the thickness of this one band here. Because this is designed to overlap, I think it provides much more insulation. I also think it allows for a lot more flexibility. Um, it's just, it's a better design. Uh, I think it's cool. Um, I was a little skeptical when I first started with it. Uh, I, I'm sold on it. I just, I, I don't, I've not seen any, anything better than it. So we'll be getting a couple more for the dogs. We'll still use it this year because we're going to, um, we're going to do a couple more hunts yet in the next week or two that will be cold. Um, probably in the same area. Um, we might get into some field work as well. I'll put it on them there. I like the idea of um, the camel breakup too for a solid black dog. Um, yellow dogs I don't think are as, it's as big of an issue, but the black dogs, um, I think it breaks up that solid black. They also have some external panels that are white, and I, I picked up those because we were, we were talking about a snow goose hunt for this year. It has a white panel. They also have a blaze orange. I don't think I would use this uh, for an upland dog. My dogs work and are moving, and I think the risk typically is overheating. I don't have issues with them um, in the cold. I think it's something that you could put on the dog, quite honestly, to go ice fishing in the winter. Um, I think it's something that it's like an extra layer of insulation for them. Um, so we'll probably use them throughout the, throughout the year um, that way. But I wanted to talk about them because several questions have come up about just vests in general. What do you do to help or avoid issues when you're hunting in the cold weather? Um, those completely came from some of the videos that we were posting, uh, some of the hunts that we've been on, some of the hunts that we'll continue to be on. And you can see, so this whole podcast, this whole video, video blog thing, um, you know, we put, we put her in that blind. Uh, it's just another place. It's an extension of place training. It's an extension of her kennel command. Uh, she'll stay in there all day. I, I could have these all over the house just like I have our, our place cots, but it obviously takes up a lot more space. So um, I really like them. I recommend it. I don't recommend getting them and going hunting with them without practicing. Um, we're actually gonna, that's Ben's. Um, what is that one called? It's called a Visalab, isn't it? Invisalab. Invisalab. Um, that's Ben's, and he he's had it for his dogs. Um, I used it. I am. We're ordering some. Um, we're gonna order a couple. I've got a couple that are uh, different. They're a different brand. They don't sit on legs. They're just like um, they look like the hut the hut part um, that we use in some of our dove fields, and we use them for training. But I want to start. I'll I'll get a few now for training out of the elevated portion and obviously for getting them out of the water when we're in when we're in water situations so really good um really good tools that i think are necessary in cer at certain points i'm not a gadgety trainer i don't like i prefer to have less stuff um when possible i prefer to keep stuff pretty simple all the time but i do think that something like this is easier than um and more, maybe more versatile than toting in like a platform. I've got a, an old tree stand platform um, that I've got mounted on a pond for training. And it's just, it's all it is, is a, it's a platform from a tree stand, like from a climber. And that works for training, but it's a little bit awkward for me to haul it around. Um, it's a little heavy. This is pretty light. It served as, uh, we actually pulled ducks out of the, out of the marsh with it, um, worked pretty well for that. So just another, just another thing that I do think is important to A, build into training, and then B, incorporate into the hunt when necessary. Um, I don't think it's necessary all the time, but when you start getting into mid to late November like we are now, um, and things are icing up and things are getting cold and we're getting these dogs wet in and out, I think we have to be careful. Um, you know, one person made a comment. I had a bunch of comments about some of the some of the hunt footage that we've put out recently. 99% uh, of it really, really, really positive, and I really appreciate it. Had one person that said something about 
um, you know, it's, he said he didn't support what we were showing because he, in his opinion, I was putting my dog at risk. And then he said something about it's just a duck. And then he said something about, you know, he supports a lot of his stuff. He can't support this. I was offended by that. Um, I was offended by it. And, and I tried to answer it back as politely as possible, but I was offended at it because by it because a couple of reasons. First off, I'd never put my dogs at risk, not willingly, not open, not not knowingly. Um, my dogs are part of our family, so we I would never put them at risk. I think it's I think it's um, maybe something that if you don't have experience with duck dogs, if you don't have experience with hunting dogs. Um, you'll realize that some of the things that these guys do are really impressive. Uh, they're extremely driven, motivated, dedicated, passionate dogs, just like we are hunters. Um, I said something to the effect of, you know, I think my dog would be insulted by that comment. Uh, and I do think so because that's what they live for. That's what they've been bred for. They're, you got to remember the there's a good podcast out there. It's called um, Hunting Dog Confidential. Talks about the origins of hunting dogs. And it's real. I re highly recommend it. But they talk about w how these dogs, how these Labradors, how these Goldens, how all the, all the retriever breeds, all the pointing breeds, they talk about these different styles of dogs, how and why they were developed. They were working tools. They 100% were developed to help us in specific situations. These dogs were built for tough conditions. Um, they were their, their bodies are their bodies are built for it. Like that coat is designed for it. The way their tail is is designed for it. The way their 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 the hardiness of them is designed for it. Now it, there are limitations, just like there are limitations with people. And so yes, I always think you have to be conscious of that, recognize that, um, and act accordingly. But the conditions we were in were not that. And so I, w I think my dogs would have been a bit insulted by it. I also think that the co a comment like it's just a duck is a really poor statement. Um, if you're a hunter and you kill something, you better be ready to do whatever you have to do to recover it, to utilize it, to consume it, whatever, whatever it is. You know, if you're trapping, you're utilizing stuff off of those animals. If you are hunting them, you are consuming them. You don't, to me, saying it's just a duck um, wasn't a good, wasn't something good, wasn't, it, 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 it didn't sit well with me. So, um, you know, I think the, I, the point of it is showing it is I want people to realize how capable these dogs are, how important they are as a conservation tool. Uh, I could we have gone and got those ducks ourselves? Absolutely. Would we have if we didn't have retrievers? Absolutely. I, I also said something to him about in my comment back about having a retriever, training a retriever is part of my commitment as a hunter, part of my commitment as a conservationist. It's also the my enjoyment. It's the reason I love doing it. So if I didn't if I didn't have a dog. I wouldn't go and hunt probably in those conditions because it wouldn't be as fun to me. Um, I think the, the part of the biggest return for me is working these dogs, having a chance to let these dogs do what they were built to do, what they love to do. Uh, they love to do it just like we do. So, um, you know, it's, it's, that was, that was something that it bugged me a little bit. I'm over it now. Um, but it's important for us, I think, to show you and and give you our thoughts on it because i you can think whatever you want and i and i don't hold it against the guy and i don't um you know like i said i'm over it what i don't want to do is be the person that you know if i feel a certain way about something and you bring it up to me i'll let you know what i think um, i'm not necessarily big on sharing my opinion on everything because what does it matter you know, a lot of that stuff, I think you should make up your own mind. But if someone says something like that, I, I am going to respond if I see a need for it. And that, that one I did. So, um, but I, I think the whole idea of this, this podcast, the whole idea of this video is to share with you some of the stuff that we're doing this time of year, why we're doing it, how we're doing it. Um, and hopefully it gives you some insight, gives you some ideas, 
helps with you if you've had some questions about it because clearly some people did have some questions about it. So I hope that helps. Um, that's it. Another podcast. Uh, we've been lacking on the podcast and I really apologize for that. I think you'll understand when I tell you it's November and we have spent, Ben and I have been in the tree for 17, I think we got 17 days on stand, 10 dark to dark sits, 10 or more dark to dark sits, haven't killed a deer. That's okay. We are having, we are enjoying it. We love it. It's not about necessarily shooting one, but it would be nice to put a tag on one. But uh, it's taken away a lot of our ability to do stuff like this. It's not that we're not going to do it. It's just, this is a really short window of time. And I've messaged a few people about that because I've gotten way behind on responding to emails, direct messages, text messages, stuff like that with questions. And it's not that I, it, it, it's not that I won't, it's just, it's going to be delayed a little bit because this is a real short window. This hunting season comes and goes so quickly. And so we are trying to maximize and get the most out of it for our dogs. Um, and I recommend people uh, doing the same it, before you know it, it's done. And then we sit here and think about it for 10 months. So nine months. So, um, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to continue to do it for probably the next, hopefully we get another good month or six weeks out of it. So uh, thank you again for your support. We appreciate it greatly. We appreciate your patience. Um, we'll keep doing these. We've got a couple more. Uh, we've got lots of questions to answer on podcasts, and I've just been making a list of them. Um, so we'll continue doing that. But appreciate your support. Please do us a favor. Share it with someone that you think might get some value out of it. Leave us a review if there's a review place for it, wherever you're listening to it, and um, share it with someone that you think it might benefit.